Thank you for joining us for this session of the K-12 Blackboard Innovative Teaching Series. The series is designed to help K-12 educators reimagine education with Blackboard teaching and learning solutions. The K-12 Blackboard Innovative Teaching Series harnesses the power of our K-12 community of academic leaders, teachers, and other experts to provide relevant, real-time, on-demand, and ongoing professional development opportunities for K-12 educators. My name is Katie Gallagher, and I'm the Director of Solutions Marketing for Teaching and Learning K-12 at Blackboard. I'll be serving as the moderator for the K-12 Blackboard Innovative Teaching Series. Thank you to Jenny Breister from our field marketing team, who will be helping to answer questions today in the chat, as well as Melissa Mares, our product marketing intern for the spring. Uh, we will be joining you as the host for this spring series, and we're always open to new ideas for topics for the series, so let us know if you have an interest in presenting for our future session or a topic you'd like to see, you can always email me at katie.gallagher at blackboard.com. As you can see, uh, each webinar in the series is recorded. You can search for the K-12 Blackboard Innovative Teaching Series playlist on our Blackboard TV YouTube channel, or you can go to tinyurl.com slash bitsk12. You'll be receiving this recording and presentation slides in a few days after the webinar by email. Um, in addition, you'll receive an invitation to participate in an online PLC on course sites designed to augment the series and create an avenue for ongoing dialogue and collaboration. So be sure to accept that invitation and participate. As you can see, we have many exciting professional development sessions lined up for the series this spring. Join us again on Monday at 3.30 Eastern Time for virtual peer tutoring with Crystal Poland from NCVPS. You can go to bbbd.blackboard.com slash k12bits to register for Monday's session or any session within the series. If you haven't done so already, be sure to download the free uh, BBK12 Live app for PD On Demand. Every session in this series is fed into that app so that you can access the recordings anytime anywhere. Uh, we're very pleased to have Patrick Tart and Adrian Rowe uh, from Wake County Public Schools today who will take us through bringing learning to life with Blackboard. Uh, when students need an online learning experience and instructors need data that is easy to manage, the Wake County Public School System uses Blackboard Learn. Learn how Lake County has used Blackboard for over 14 years and what tools have become invaluable for their system. Patrick and Adrian will highlight several programs which have grown with the adoption of Blackboard solutions, including the Career and Technical Education Department. Adrian began her teaching adventure in 2001 at Durham Community uh, in School Academy, focused on helping at-risk students stay in school through building relationships with caring adults in both the community and the school system. In 2005, she completed her master's degree in education at North Carolina State University. Her journey took her to Sanderson High School in 2005, where she became part of the pilot program for Blackboard in Lake County Schools. Since then, she's moved to middle school education, written curriculum for Lake County Public Schools, participated in, in creating state assessments items for NCBPI, and has served as the CT department uh, chair yearbook advisor and Blackboard coordinator for her school. Over the past decade, Blackboard has played an integral role in helping her grow in methods of content delivery, differentiation, assessment, and engaging uh, my, her students in, 21st, in a 21st century classroom. Patrick Tart, uh, for nine years in ele the elementary classroom, was his bread and butter, where he grew his love for quality education enriched by technology. Three of those nine years were, strictly, were spent strictly in the computer lab where he landed the top honor, uh, the top 12 teachers of the year in Lake County Public Schools, as well as the WRAL Teacher of the Week. Next, he completed his Master's in Educational Technology and moved into the Blackboard and System Administrator role shortly afterwards. He works each day to support his, the students in Lake County and the teachers via Blackboard, and each day is a joy. So we're very pleased to have Patrick and Adrian join us for uh, this series. We were lucky enough to see them present in person uh, earlier in the fall, November, and we're really thrilled and excited for their session today. 
Uh, I'll ask that everyone, uh, when you're not speaking, please mute your phone using uh, your handset or star six. You can always unmute uh, using star six again to speak up. You can also use your top button, but when you're not speaking, if you could deselect it so that we can um, ensure quality of our recording. So with that, I'll hand it over to Patrick and Adrian. Um, with one last reminder to please participate in the session. Please use the chat and don't hesitate to unmute yourself to speak up, to ask a question, or, or add a comment. Thank you. Hey, thanks for, uh, for letting us present. This is um, Patrick Hart. Uh, Adrian's with us as well. So uh, we've had a, a great um, integrating blackboard within the White County school system. Uh, in All right. Okay, Patrick Simmons. Hey, um, Adrian. Go ahead. Yep, go ahead, Adrian. So Patrick's still having some trouble with his okay. audio, so I'm okay. going to take over for now and tell you about my portion of it as he gets his technical difficulties taken care of. As mentioned earlier, my name is Adrienne Rowe. I'm the CTE department chair here at Martin Middle School, and I'm going to show you how we use Blackboard in several areas, including content delivery, developing common assessments, collaboration, and collecting and analyzing data. We deliver content through several ways through Blackboard. There's so many different ways that you can deliver content. There's so many interactive features in Blackboard. Uh, every day when my students log on, they have daily objectives. Just like uh, most teachers would have on a whiteboard when they walk in the classroom, I have those objectives on Blackboard. I also have my warm-up activities, the assignments for the day. I use Blackboard to differentiate assignments and assessments to provide video content resources, notes, and feedback to my students. Here's a view of what students see as soon as they log into my classroom. You'll see, um, they'll see what they do step by step as soon as they come in. Step one, do this. Step two, do this. I have the objectives, what they're learning, any course links that they might need that day. On the left-hand side under navigation, you'll see that I also have announcements. Uh, they can get to the tools section, any assignments, tests, and then in the study section here, they have access to all the notes and things that we use in class, any PowerPoints that we use in class. Um, in the express and respond section here, we have links to the blog and any resources that they might use. Um, an example of a resource that we use a lot is Quizlet in the classroom. They can practice their vocabulary. In the D section here, you'll see that I also like to use videos and use the mashup feature with Blackboard to insert videos for students to watch from warm up. It might be a video about what we're going to talk about that day, and they'll watch the video. I usually have them respond in a blog, and then we'll get the class started. In the group section, they here on letter F, you can see that the student, this is me here, I'm in several groups, but the student will see what groups they're in. And I use groups for differentiation within the classroom. I also use it for collaboration. We're going to talk about those more as we move on throughout this presentation. I like to use Blackboard for common assessments. It's so, it makes it so easy to, use, to have common assessments. You can create pools that have questions for any teacher to reuse. You can reuse it um, from year to year, from semester to semester, or you can share those pools with your colleagues so that you're having common assessments among your content area. Here's an example or a screenshot of our pools. Adrian, mm -hmm. I'm just going to interrupt for a minute. I think Patrick has audio again. Patrick, can you I do that? have audio again. Uh, sorry about that. The school's down in the valley, and uh, the noise pick up cell coverage <laughs> there. <laughs> so. Oh, we're, uh, I just wanted to give you a chance to test that out, and I didn't know if you wanted to adjust it all. Uh, but yeah, she's doing have... great. Let's keep rolling. Okay. And uh, I'll, I'll do the introduction a little bit later. <laughs> All right, did anyone, would anyone like to see how we do this? Um, you can put
put a hands uh, thumbs up if you want to see how to do this. But we create common pools, and they're they're based on content areas, objectives, and then we make tests based on those pools, and both can be exported out really easily. Okay. As you can see, I've pulled from the event, the spreadsheet area, there's several spreadsheets, there's spreadsheet charts here, there's spreadsheet components, and, and put those both from both of those pools into this event spreadsheet test here. Another thing I really enjoy about Blackboard and what it has to offer is the collaboration piece. I use group section a lot, not just for di uh, differentiation, but also for group assignments um, and group pages. You're going to love this if you're a teacher. If you've ever had a group assignment and you use any kind of technology for them to turn it in, you don't want everyone in that group turning in the same assignment. If you, um, you can assign them tasks to do, you can assign it to certain students in the group, and then they turn it in, and you see it as one file, one assignment. It makes it really easy for grading. They Each time you set up a group in Blackboard, they have a home page where they can do file exchange, which is really great if one student's working on a portion of the assignment and another student's going to finish up that portion. They can exchange. Student A can send the file over to student B, and student B can finish it, and then ultimately upload it in the group assignments section. They have a group wiki that they can set up, a, um, a journal that they can set up. These are all really great things that my students really love to do. It makes it easier both on them as group members, but also on me when I'm going to the grading section and just downloading what I need from that group. This is um, an example of differentiation in the testing area, still using groups. So this particular um, screenshot is of this particular screenshot is of a particular group. This may be the this is the Super Geeks group. I like to keep them kind of funny, my group names, and this student only sees this database test. It's a version of the test that has been assigned to that student. I usually have three versions of every test, and I separate my classes out by um, different, I use different things. I use IEP modifications, I use just classroom modifications that I feel that the student needs, and have different, three different versions. Sometimes my modifications are based on number of answer choices, sometimes it's number of questions, sometimes it's the difficulty of the questions, but it's really great. I really love this group's feature. I can have one group who can't read. Um, I actually have some students that have trouble reading, and I can give them questions with less answer choices, and they don't even know what the other students are getting. They only see what's assigned to them. We also use Blackboard to collect and analyze data in CTE. And some ways that I mean by collecting data are also collecting assignments, responses to reading through blogs. I create reading guides through them, and you can set it up to automatically grade for, for you. Um, and then, of course, looking at the grading, uh, or actually grading in Blackboard, you get data through that by looking at how the students are doing. You can grade them using rubrics. You can look at the statistics for an entire assignment or a test, the number of attempts that they've provided. So let's just look at a few of those. So this is a reading response that I did. It was really, this one was more like a, a guided reading where students went to a GCF Learn Free website. And this was uh, one of my lower level um, differentiated assignments for students, and it basically guides them along the reading. They fill in the blank as they go, just like taking notes, and it automatically grades it. They automatically get feedback. They know how well they've done. They know if they need to go back and check their reading and look and see if they missed something. Here is a reading response for a higher level group. This is my CSA 3 course. They were asked to go and read an excerpt from a website and then answer these questions. This one is a little more 
in depth and it requires more critical thinking. They had to look at this pattern of binary code and respond to it and explain the pattern that they see, did they see, and really think about what is binary code, when do we use it, how do we use it in our lives, and it really amazes me some of the answers that we get from students. They really enjoy the blogging section of Blackboard. If you're new to Blackboard or you've never seen this, you will love the grading section. I have set my grading section up to color code it, and I can at a quick glance tell you that there are five assignments or tests that have been started and not finished based on the color. Uh, the green color shows me that these students have started it. You can also see the little clock going around. Um, I can also at a quick glance, glance see how many assignments I need to grade because when a student turns in an assignment that needs to be graded by me, it will give me the exclamation point. I have color coded the grade percentages or points depending on if it's a points assignment or a percentage assignment uh, based on uh, grade, the grade that they achieve. Uh, it's changed a little bit since then, since this snapshot, but uh, purple is usually an A, green is a B, yellow is a C, and when you start seeing the red, they're either getting close to failing, they're in the D or the failing section. So I can at a glance for an assignment see how well my students are doing. Another great thing about the grading center is I can right click on any of the cells of a student's assignment and see how many times they attempted an assignment. If it's a test that automatically, I've set it up to automatically grade, I can see that this student has taken this five times. Clearly, the student's struggling. Um, it's also great for remediation. I see that I need to do, if a lot of kids have taken a lot of attempts, I can, I know immediately I need to do some remediation or with specific kids. It's also a great way to know if I need to move a child from one group, like a higher level group to a lower level group for differentiation of both assessments and assignments. Another great feature about Blackboard and grading is the inline grading. This is a, a snapshot of an Excel spreadsheet that I've had students save to show the functions and I can simply look at the snapshot, see that they've got the functions correct. If they don't, I can click comment up here, I can click the comment button, I can make comments, I can type it, I can circle things, and then I can give them feedback um, in the feedback section, just type it out there, but I really like to mark it up, just like marking up a paper that you've received from a student. You can mark it up right here digitally. The student gets the feedback. I really do make it a point to tell my students, please don't just look at your grade. Go in, look at the comments, look at the feedback, see what you got wrong so that they can learn from it. Um, this is a really great feature. I really love it. It makes my grading a lot faster, actually. Um, speaking of more great features, the rubrics now, the actual assignment is kind of covered up. I haven't popped out the rubric here, but um, the students will be given an assignment and you still have the inline grading behind here that you can comment or mark up on. But then I have a rubric over here on the right hand side where I can click the level that the student has mastered. Um, you can add as many levels as you want, but you can see the pop out here shows the different levels that I have for this particular rubric. What's great about the rubric, you can provide feedback directly on the rubric. Hey, you got this right, but you're missing this part of it. And then again, when the student clicks back in to Blackboard to view his or her grade, they see the comments that you make just like if you were doing paper pencil and turning papers back into students. If you are like me and you are a numbers person and you like to see the data, then you'll like the analyzing data section. Um, I can, there's different ways you can do this. You can analyze each question, which Patrick's going to talk about later, doing an item analysis. But this is a column statistics. And when I, you right click on a column in the grade section, you can do a column statistics and quickly get an overview and see your grade distribution. You can see your median, your average, your minimum and maximum. You can also see there's a student here that 
has still needs to be graded. And probably the student turned this assignment in late. And I can quickly see that I need to go in there and grade that. Um, what's also great is I told you earlier that I offer three different levels of every test. And I have this little secret way of how I, I keep up with it, like what level it is without saying one, two, and three, or whatever, so that the students don't know. But I can quickly jump to the next version of that test. So I can start with one version and jump to the next version without having to go out of column statistics, which is really great. So then I can see the overall picture for the whole assignment or the whole assessment, which is really great for just getting an idea. It's good for um, of, um, informal assessments as well as assessments just to get an idea of how your students are doing. So in summary, Wake County, we, we like to create our blackboards as a virtual classroom. Everything from giving them videos to watch, assignments to do. I've just started playing with the video capture tool where I will give them, I'll record myself and tell them what they're going to do for the day. We can, I can provide class notes. We can do a collaborate just like we're doing here. And I can teach from Blackboard, um, provide assessments. They can work together in groups on a group page, not only to um, converse with one another through a blog, or they can provide ta tasks with one another, break up the task in a group. They can submit their assignments in a group. When you get to the grading section, you can see it as one assignment submitted for that group and grade it. And when you type in that grade, it goes out to the whole group. Um, I also like to, as I said earlier, analyze that information that I got from the students. You provide feedback for them. And it really works like a virtual classroom. I'd like to go ahead and hand it over back to Patrick now. If anyone has any questions before I do so, just let me know. Thanks so much. Uh, Adrian has been a phenomenal help for the county. Um, and the CTE department definitely gets our applause. There were some of the ones who adopted it early on and, and really took hold of it and kind of made Blackboard what it, um, what it is in Wake County today. Um, I'm not going to go all the way back to the introductions, but hopefully everybody can uh, hear me well now. Uh, I am going to talk real quick before I go into a few tools, talk about some of the, the unique ways that Wake County is using it, even outside of the classroom. So a lot of those awesome features that you see, whether it's customizing the color of your grade book or creating groups uh, and things like that, it's actually being used on department levels within our county. Um, and actually, I will kind of rewind just to give a uh, kind of an overall picture of Blackboard and, and how we got started. It was, it was 14, a little over 14 years ago. Uh, we have, uh, we have over, um, we've doubled our course activity in, you know, seven years since, you know, December of 14, 2014, we've got almost 5,000 active courses. We have uh, 100, uh, over 160,000 students. We've got, you can imagine how many teachers that is in departments, um, 171 schools. There's one Blackboard person, fortunately, People are very supportive, and every school has Blackboard coordinators. Um, so when you think about the things that Adrian's doing in the CTE department, um, it's it's massive. It's it's countywide. We have uh, we have purchased the mobile version, so students and teachers can download the app, the Mobile Learn, and the BB Grader app, and they can use that. We're getting almost a thousand mobile logins each day. Um, in one system admin, uh, so we're doing plenty of heat tickets, you know, questions and, and, and all of that. So I just give that uh, step back view so you can um, kind of think about not just classroom use for Blackboard. Uh, we, we have long-term suspended students uh, in our score program, the Second Chance Online Remediation Education. And, uh, and those students actually use the tool we're using now, Blackboard Collaborate, which we've, we've also purchased. So the long-term suspended students will use a Blackboard Learn shell. They'll do a lot of those things that Adrian was talking about online. 
right? and also using Blackboard Collaborate to have daily classes. They'll have class sessions, and they'll actually, like, if they were at high school, they have a, you know, their, their 50 minute block or their hour and a half block, and then they'll log out of that course, go to their next course, and go to a collaborate session there and interact with the students and teachers live there. Um, we also have fifth graders at uh, several different schools all throughout the county. There's 26 different schools where we have fifth graders. And they're actually tapping in with a sixth grade classroom. And they're getting sixth grade math. Um, they're in the AG program and they've tested out and so they're they're actually taking sixth grade math. We're trying to do some things as well as using Collaborate to to tap in to where they can stream live the classroom from that sixth grade teacher. Uh, we're still working on some network issues and things like that. But that's a that's a fantastic program. Um, our security drill, <laughs> the security department, when when the uh, the principal at a school does a lockdown drill or a fire drill, after they're done collecting their, you know, how long it took and all that, they go to a Blackboard course shell and the principals will submit a, an assignment, a test, and fill in that information. And that's set to automatically grade it. And the, the security team, when there's a, a grade that's, you know, a little low or something, they they can immediately tell, oh yeah, that you know, we didn't have the, the police come out there, we need the fire chart, we need these things in place, and they can uh, interact with the principals right away. So we got the secu security department working with Blackboard to, um, to enhance the communication within the county. Our favorite word, right? Common Core. <laughs> if you're in K-12, then uh, we we have a Common Core certification where the instructors go through a self-paced course and um, complete that, and then they have an achievement at the end once they've completed that course based on the adaptive releases and the awards and everything that's set up. The badge prints out a certificate certificate at the end, and uh, and that way they they have uh, basically passed that course. We also have uh, other tools besides Blackboard Learn. You know, we have um, EduBlogs and uh, PB Works and other things. Even though there's blogs and wikis within inside of Blackboard, uh, if if a teacher wants to use some of those Web 2.02 tools, they use the CyberSense online train, which is a, another self-paced course, and it goes through multimedia videos and assessments and documents and uh, laws surrounding student use of Web 2.0 tools as well as teachers in the classroom. So they they self-pace themselves through that, and once they're done, they submit that, and the help desk will create them a blog or a wiki, things like that. So there's uh, those, those are just a few. We have an uh, ESL department working on it. We've got the budget department. We've got we've got a uh, plenty of other departments that are using Blackboard even outside of the classroom. I wanted to highlight a few tools that we find very helpful uh, across the board. And Adrian pointed out some fantastic ones that she uses a lot. Um, and actually, while I'm talking about that, the, uh, the CTE department was, was around when we first started using Blackboard. And so they took. Uh, they, they basically took the lead and tried to see how far they could push Blackboard, what they could do with it. And once they realized they could make those pools of test questions and uh, export it as a zip file and import that into another course, then everybody all of a sudden had a standardized assessment to give and they could collect all that data. Now Blackboard's grown a lot more and they've got to explore with the content management. And so, um, so things have changed there. We just haven't quite gotten up to speed on that yet. <laughs> uh, I want to highlight a few tools here, some of the, um, the, the achievements. And these are new since we've upgraded um, achievements, uh, inline grading. Those are probably the, the biggest 
to, as well as this retention center, which has, has been uh, modified drastically. Uh, and then I'll hit on the item analysis and then talk about YouTube mashup and maybe a little bit about how you can do the, the video everywhere. So with achievements, it's, if you've used another program, it might be called badges, but those are available once you get to a particular service pack. Uh, a certain version of Blackboard that you're using, and you can go to your tools menu, and uh, and you you'll have this achievements tools. There's three different types of achievements that you can award your students with. Maybe they hit a milestone, they've they've completed a unit, or they could complete the course, which that's what we use for some of our self-paced courses, or you could customize it and make it whatever you want. That is the benefit of Blackboard. It, it definitely has a lot of ways to customize all the little things, when something's released, when the due date is, and, uh, and on and on and on. And so depending on which type of achievement you want, what you'll do is you'll attach some strings to that award that you want the students to get. You say, hey, here, here's where you need to go, and here's the hoops that you have to jump through. Right? So those would be the rules. Uh, you would go to create your assessment, and given the name and everything, and then you would create these triggers. And those triggers can be attached to um, something completed by a certain date. Uh, you could have only certain people that could earn this award. Um, you could have, uh, I think the next slide has a little bit more on that. Uh, as you're creating your achievement, you can attach it to a grade column. So if there's something already that they've been tested on um, or they're getting ready to take, you know, Adrian's getting ready to give her uh, her CTE final prep, you know, so she give them a little practice, she could attach something to that column. And once they do that, I can base it on did they get a certain score? Did they get a certain percentage? Was it less than or equal to? Was it greater than or equal to? Was it between? And so you can really get to customize it. And then you would add that item. So that's your, that's your string. That's your attachment to that grade center column. And you can have multiple items that's attached. Uh, so um, once you have your structure of your class planned out, then you can go through and um, attach several strings for them to get that award. Uh, something fun to do, and I highly recommend this because really it's a motivational piece for the students. Um, there are a few benefits teachers get from the achievements and badges where it's an easy way to tell how many hoops they've jumped through and if they're meeting proficiency or not. But students really can, these kind of become little things that they can collect and, oh yeah, I got that one. Did you get that badge yet? So if you have a biology class, you know, set up 20 different levels of awards and badges that they can earn. And so maybe that first one is your level one phytoplankton and now you've moved up to a, a zooplankton or I might have gotten those backwards. And next thing to become part of the food chain and move on up. So if you're in a math class, maybe you're, oh uh, yeah, you're just a, you're an exponent, you're a plus symbol, you're a, oh, I'm a square root. So you can kind of customize the badges to your to your course and make have a lot of fun with it. When the students see it, the neat thing is that they can tell what they have already earned, see how these are kind of grayed in and they got a little check next to it. And when it doesn't uh, show up as grayed in, they know that that's one they still have yet to earn. They can also filter what they've already earned and what they still need to earn. It's important for students to know what to expect, right? So we click on the little drop down there, drop down list, and uh, it'll tell them all those rules that you've set. And I don't think I'll pull a screenshot of that. But when you do that, a pop up window comes out and it tells them hey, you've completed three out of the four uh, qualifications to get this badge. Hey, and that badge means extra recess. So. <laughs> A little motivation there for the students. The neat thing about badges is it's not hard to get set up with badges. You can go ahead and choose from the default icons that are there, and they're pretty snazzy looking. Um, but you can also create your own, whether you got some Photoshop skills or 
what uh, we what I recommend is just to go Google for uh, science icons. the The best size to use is a is a square, um, you know, maybe seventy five pixels or a little bigger. But uh, a square will work perfect, as you can see. These are all squares, and so. If you find a whole set of science icons, there's tons of free ones out there. You go get it, crop it, even then something as simple as paint, and then you have a whole bunch of different little badges that match and have a theme. And you create your badge, browse your computer, select that one, and then you have a, a nice little set of badges there. The inline grading bit. Adrian, talk about. I do have a few closer up screenshots here. Um, the neat thing about this, if you haven't used it, is that any Word, Microsoft Word, Microsoft PowerPoint, Microsoft Excel, and the, here's the key PDFs. Anytime a student submits uh, one of those as an assignment, this is going to populate straight within the browser. Now, if I'm teaching a graphic design class and they submit a Photoshop file, they can still do that, but it's going to show up as a, a link to download that file. But again, if you have Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, Excel, and again, the secret here is PDF, is you can submit that and it'll appear right with in the browser. All right, so there's no download for the teacher to get, and there's no you know, the student who said, oh, I forgot my pen drive at home. No, they, they have it right there. And they can even go download the original file that was submitted. Um, so, so this tool is, uh, is a big time saver. And there's annotation features here. So if you haven't used it, um, again, you, you do have to be on a certain service pack of Blackboard. And you have to have uh, the cloud enabled, so there's a few setup tools there, things to set up. Um, but once you do, uh, we've gotten a lot of uh, use out of this. Um, so the, the comments, um, the teacher would cre create a comment, good use of an image, and straight down through here, they can highlight, they can draw, they can do strike through. Um, but you still get your feedback. Uh, it's hard to see it over here. But on the right, you still have all the feedback options that you want. Oh, there we go. So when the teacher goes to and student, uh, click on this. After it's been annotated, they can download the original file, or they can download the annotated version. So the teacher, if they really want that printout, for a, maybe a student conference or something, maybe that one or two stu students just need that paper version. They can go get that annotated version printed out, or they can download the original again. Uh, went back here. Uh, and again, you got the the feedback that you can put with any assignment here. Something that. Adrian talked about was the rubrics, and if you haven't used a rubric, they can be imported and exported just like assessments. So if you have a, a fourth grade writing rubric um, or something, they, they can uh, write that out and then submit that. And if you have a rubric attached to that assignment, the, the teacher can either click on, uh, click on this link and it'll drop down. Let's see if I got a screenshot of that. No, I don't. <laughs> uh, they they can drop down, and basically the they will show up right here, and they just click. You know, one, two, three, four. They got it. If you click this uh, little fly out window, it'll give you a whole pop up window, and you can add feedback per column and row. So when you check that they did above standard or below standard or at standard for a certain row, you can give feedback per column uh, per per item there. Um, some underused features here are, you know, attaching a file. Maybe you have a standard file, you know, model example of what it should look like. You could attach that back to the student. Um, do some spell check there. These add notes are private notes that you can add about the uh, students. Um, so as an instructor, you would use that, and the students would never see that feature there. 
the inline grading goes beyond just assignments. Um, you can have it, uh, before I actually move on with that, is uh, the ability to, to put Word, Excel, and PowerPoint is all great, right? But let's say you, you don't have that. Let's say you're a Mac district and you have pages, numbers, and Keynote. Well, they let you export as PDF, right? Uh, if I'm using power, uh, if I'm using Photoshop or uh, Adobe Illustrator, those will let me export in PDF. Almost anything will let you export in PDF. And when the student does submit that assignment in a PDF format, it'll still show up in line here uh, within the browser. So uh, I forgot to point that out. Uh, so these inline grading is basically this toolbar here on the right, and those appear in blogs, wikis, discussion boards, journals, assignments, uh, which are all other tools in Blackboard, but the, the sidebar grading feature with rubrics and it, those are all uh, able to be used with, with all of these here. Retention Center is another big one. I'm going to go fast since we're kind of wrapping up here at the end. Uh, the re Retention Center is something where, where if the teacher, if the instructor, clicks on the global navigation panel next to their name, and then they'll drop down and they'll click the BB Home, or you can go straight to this uh, Retention Center here, and uh, it has the up-down arrow. It'll give you notifications about that course based on if students are uh, behind in, well, we'll look at what kind of things you can see. So in this biology course, uh, it tells me that somebody missed some deadlines, and I'm going to click see details to see a little bit more. Uh, and it gives you an interactive with your entire class right here. It gives you an act interactive matrix here. So if, if you have targets set to miss, you know, someone missed a deadline, I would be able to click on that dot, and it takes me right to Sarah, the assignment that she missed. Or maybe she's below grade level. And so uh, Adrian had her grade center set up color-coded. Another way to do that would be to go right through the, the uh, retention center here and check the grades. Um, uh, maybe they haven't logged in in a, in a while, or maybe they haven't They've logged in, but they're not clicking on anything. So uh, you can set the grade center up to do, or the retention center to do whatever you want. Some of those things that you can do is uh, you can monitor a particular student. So here I went to Sarah. She missed a deadline. So I go see what she's doing. Let me help her out. Um, I can email her directly from Blackboard. And if she has her correct email in Blackboard, then you can email her straight from there. Or you can choose to monitor it as well, and that gives you a list of those students that you want to mo monitor and keep a close eye on. Uh, and then Sarah's missed some assignments. This is the test student. She wasn't really 133 days late. <laughs> uh, one more feature that I want to highlight is item analysis. Uh, so I'm going to Pretend we're going to go back to the grade center. We have a, a lot of grades entered. And um, when I click on that column heading in the grade center, um, if, if this is uh, the ecosystem test or something like that, I can go do that drop down, and it'll give me an item analysis choice here. And, uh, and this is where you're going to be able to tell which test questions were tricky for the students, which ones were quality. Uh, and the neat thing is that Blackboard pulls a lot of that information out for you. So you get a lot of the good, uh, a lot of the good summary stuff here and discrimination. And, um, but it, it'll pull, based on the results, some of these things. So uh, in the legend down here, it says review recommended. Um, in my little practice test here, everybody messed it up. So, uh, so they both questions. I would go back and review that test, and I can actually click that, go back to the test. Maybe I want to make some changes to the way it's worded, or maybe what the answer was. <laughs> maybe I put false, and it was supposed to be true. So this is an easy way to to drill into that test and then modify it. 
for future use. Whew, that was a lot. Um, I do want to leave some time for questions here at the end. We're right at uh, 40, 45 minutes. So uh, if there are some questions or Adrian, you want to add anything else? Um, or Katie, if you have some things that, are, that you want us to describe a little more, we're open for that and we'll be here for a while. So this has been great so far. Let's open it up for questions. So you can use your talk button or type a question in chat or use star six to unmute your line. Uh, we'd love to hear questions and comments from the group. This has been wonderful. I am going to put a, a two links in the chat window. This first link that I just put in there is a link to the Blackboard help site that we have at Wake County, and it has uh, some tip sheets that we've created for our custom environment, but it also has a lot of links to the tips and tutorials. Uh, one thing that we've done with the support page is we've sectioned it out for students and instructors so that students have a place to go. And um, I put this second link in here because that's where a lot of those things link to. Blackboard's done, a, I believe, a, a fantastic job of up in their support site. Um, and if you go there, the important thing to remember is to know which version of Blackboard Learn that you're using. So if you're on Service Pack 11 or if you're on the April release, uh, we're in Service Pack 14. So what we've done to minimize confusion is on our support site, we have links to all the Service Pack 14 documentation. So if somebody needs to know how to uh, export a rubric or, or do whatever, we've linked directly to that specific spot on the support site of Blackboard. So, um, and then we have some other documentation that we've provided there. So those are, those are some helpful links there. Great, and I'm looking in the chat. Um, be sure to type your questions in, folks, yep. or comments. I'll be here from the oh, uh, <laughs> while we're yeah, sure someone's going to put a question in there, <laughs> it, but if not, one thing we are working on, one of the big projects we're working on is provisioning accounts for staff and students. Right now, 100% of our students and staff are manually uh, manually entered, um, and it's it works. <laughs> it's a it's a it's a big system, um, but we're tapping in and using the uh, the student information system integration. So the we're tapping into one of our Lotus directory, the email directory, and having accounts created nightly using that process. If you're a system administrator back there. So that way, as soon as a student is enrolled by a data manager, they have a Blackboard account that next day. Or if the, um, you know, if some a teacher leaves the county, they're deactivated that way. So we have an on ramp and an exit ramp for, for all the, hundred sixty thousand plus <laughs> people in Wake County. Questions. Oh, uh, Patrick, are you not integrating with your SAS system? Mm -hmm. like not yet. I have process. done some of our processes through there, um, but that's more. Uh, it's not automated. Um, I've found it more helpful to to have a file to load manually um, for some of our processes. But um, no, we we are hard on it. And actually, we're jumping to single sign-on with that as well. So, okay. We will be happy. Well, hey, um, I'm going to go ahead. I'll do a couple of closing slides here. I'm not trying to close down questions, but 
Uh, if folks could think through it and type their last questions in, I'll go ahead and do a couple closing slides just in case there are no other questions. Uh, but I wanted to thank Patrick and Adrian for a great presentation today. Um, wanted to be sure to remind you again, I put the link in the chat earlier for the BBC 12 Live app, but the sessions in the series will be in here as well as the best of BB World. And um, just a reminder uh, to join us again on Monday for another session. Uh, we will have with us um, Crystal Poland from NCVPF, a neighbor in the state of North Carolina to wait, um, focusing on virtual peer tutoring on Monday. Um, so again, uh, you can always find me on Twitter at onekatiegallagher.com or reach me by email at katie.gallagher at blackboard.com. But Patrick, I thank you for, for working through the audio issues today and Adrian and Patrick both for was such a great presentation. I'm hoping we still get some questions here in the chat, folks. But um, if not, I appreciate everyone taking time out of their Monday. And uh, for those of you who do not have further questions, you can get a five, seven minutes back in your day. Thanks, Melissa. Lots of great positive comments in the chat, Patrick and Adrian. Just uh, that you covered everything so well. Uh, we're folks are, are lacking on questions today, so thank you. All right, with that, we'll go ahead and kick off the recording. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Uh, greatly appreciate it.